Hello, and welcome to the Blueprint Roundtable. I'm your host, Chrissy Manzano, and today I have Emily and Lizzie with me to talk about something that has been talked about for a while, but I think even it's even more relevant now, which is do hiring managers focus too much on previous experience when interviewing? So Emily, what do you think? So it's a tricky one, right? I mean, I, I think that um, from an outsider looking in sometimes, my answer would be yes. I understand why there is a focus on experience. And I think to a certain degree, it is very relevant. When I disagree is when it starts to get into conflict with assessing for the right skills and behaviors that you want for that role, right? So especially when you're looking at DEI candidates. So um, their backgrounds might look different than your traditional profile. And if you focus too much on um, specific experience or industry-related experience given your product, you run the risk of inadvertently, you know, disqualifying candidates that have the right skills and behaviors, have the potential um, to come into the role. So I would say, yes, um, there are times where that does compete with, you know, really assessing for skills and behaviors that are necessary for the role, um, where those are present, but because they don't have, you know, a specific set or number of years within a specific industry or product type, it's a no or a hesitation, which is typically a no in an interview process. So i um, curious, Lizzie, kind of what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, um, I think it's a tricky one as well. Completely yeah. agree with everything you said, Emily. I think there's different ways you could look at it. So like when I'm sourcing, I use those guidelines of years of experience, especially let's just say for enterprise roles as a reference. Um, but sometimes I'll have candidates that I'll see, okay, maybe they're a year short on that experience they're looking for, but they have been with the same company for six years and they've had career progression from commercial to mid-market to now enterprise. That's someone I would definitely want to still speak to because they've been able to progress their career and develop new skill sets. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a tricky situation. Uh, but Chrissy, what are your thoughts? So I'm a little bias with my answer only because I've been doing a lot of research on this lately. <laughs> but So I understand why people look at experience, right? Um, because it's easier to assess, right? I, you can look at a resume and go, does someone have experience in, you know, the logistics industry or the cybersecurity yeah. industry? It's a yes or no. And then you can assess them on that experience. It's just easier to have those things kind of flow out of you of questions around that. Like, you know that, you feel that, and it's a easy that you know how to do. And the hard stuff that's there of trying to figure out that can it's the right person, it's a hard that you know, right? Um, but there's tons of data, tons of data that shows that experience often has minimal impact on if someone actually does a good job. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not a factor, but skills and behaviors have like a, it's like an 85% um, overall impact on how well somebody does. Work experience by itself has an 18% effect. So, oh, wow. but even, even if, right. So even if, and, it, and for at the IC level, this is really important. Now, when it comes to management experience, depending on what level, obviously if you've never had management experience, going into a senior VP role is not appropriate nine times out of 10 because you're setting someone up to fail. They, they, there is like that leadership EQ and experience they need and how to deal with employees and, and drive that through, right? And so, um, but I, I think about things like um, health, right? We all know that if we eat a good diet, we exercise, it's gonna make us feel better. It's gonna make us, um, you know, fit in our clothes better. It's going to give us more energy, all these things. We all know that, like no one argues that, right? Um, but, or maybe they argue how you do those things, but no one argues that conceptually, but we still don't do it. Like a lot of us still don't do it consistently. And you have to go, why do we not do that when we know the effects, the greatness that it brings? It's because like, we're so used to the hard that we know, right? Versus the hard that we don't know. It's like, oh man, but I, I'm not used to feeling that after working out or holding myself there. It's like, it's a habit I'm not used to. And I 
I am correlating this with interviewing because we're so conditioned to look at things in a way of like, okay, I'll look at that experience. I'll ask those questions when I'm in that interview around this, this, or this and make my assumptions. And it's more like I'm checking that box off versus really taking the time and work to understand if they have the skills and behaviors. And, and those are very specific questions at very specific times during the interview. And that that's work up front. That do, it is time consuming. Um, and a lot of people don't want to do that, right? But then you could argue the time consuming part of the other end is you get it wrong or they don't stay. Um, and so uh, candidates, you know, and those, those stats like were, were for the 85% success wasn't just for their outcomes, but it was also for them staying over 18 months, right, at an organization. And so I think that we over index on experience because it's, it's the easiest thing to do without planning. You don't have to plan to, to review that. And so, yeah. um, but all that to say, if we really want to get better results, because at the end of the day, you go, do you want this person to stay and do you want them to make an impact? And if the answer is yes, then you need to go, well, how do I make sure that this hiring process is set up for them to be successful? But I'm not saying experience doesn't matter, but I think the over, you know, uh, in the intensity of reviewing the experience we just have enough examples where it doesn't work, right? And the, and the people that do have the inter, industry experience that work, I would say go look at their skills and behaviors and see if they're similar to people that don't have that industry experience. I can bet you anything that they're similar, right? And yeah. so I have to say that's kind of my view on it. Um, don't know if you all have any other thoughts, but... No, I would agree. I mean, I would like looking back on just the various SaaS platforms that I've, that I've sold as a, in an IC capacity, not one of them is the same. <laughs> so they're not to the same industry. They're not to the same stakeholder. They're not even remotely the same product. Um, but one of the things that I always do is I know thy product, I know thy competitor, and I know thy market. And when, and if you know those three things, it doesn't really matter what tech you're selling during onboarding a company on some level should support you with that knowledge, or you can go out and find it and you'll have success. Um, it, I don't, I think that that, like it's the skills and behaviors that, that you're talking about. And if I look back at, um, just incredible, I see peers that I've had the opportunity to work with and those that have been consistently successful, they have that same approach, right? It, it's not, whether they came from an industry specific focus or not, it's, it's the skills and behaviors. It's so interesting. I mean, I assumed it was low, but I had no idea that stats mm -hmm. show that it's like, set, what'd you say? 17, 18% is attributed it, yeah. to experience. That's insanely low. <laughs> like that, mm -hmm. that is insane. Yeah. yeah. Harvard, Harvard business, uh, review did a study in 2019. I want to say they probably have done a recent one too. And mm -hmm. I didn't pull the stats from there. Um, but they, their whole thing was like, there, it might've even been lower and they did like thousands of people. And so it's just, you know, I think as we, as we look to hire, we just have to decide like, where do we want our hard to be? Right. Yeah. I would argue the hard should be putting the hiring process together because that's a lot easier than trying to fix a mistake because you didn't put that work in up front and now your revenue is suffering, you're behind and you've yeah. got to start that hiring process again or you drag it out, right? So um, it's choosing where you want your hard to be. You're never going to escape the hard. And I think people forget that. Like going, yeah. the seat of your pants is not going to escape where that, that hard piece is. But um I think you know what's interesting? One thought that just like pinged into my head, Chrissy, is, is like just thinking about like the scenarios where like, why did that person not work out? Like they checked every box and we all, you know what I mean? And in my mind, I'm thinking it was probably a miss on, you know, skills and behavior. It had to have been, but thinking about it, yes. usually those individuals are super strong in industry experience and they can talk the talk. And it's a little bit yeah. of a distraction. Been distracted by the talk. Oh, they know our buyers. Yeah. They know this. They they know the acronyms, and you get distracted. Yeah, no, you're totally right. It's a great it's a great point, and which you don't always like. Oh, and they crushed their quota at this company. We know that company. It's a competitor. It's associated, you know, with our industry, and we all know that like not every company is created equal. Like yeah. there are companies where they come into a territory that has worked. 
and they're closing things on day one that they didn't ever have, they never would have done without someone else having, you know, put that legwork in, right? And so there's a lot of things that you can do to see like what someone really capable of. And there's universal skills and behaviors and sales in particular, but even for customer success and marketing that are critical to assess. So, um, but I totally agree. It's like, you can get so infatuated with that industry talk and speak that you miss like, the skills and behaviors that you really want to assess for and review during the interview process. Yeah. We will, we're out of time today, but great conversation as always. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.